All right, well, I'm Vikas. Um, so my talk today is called Cash is King. It does have a few puns in there, so uh, if you're one of those people who can't, uh, who can't take puns, um, I'm sorry you live such a sad existence. Um, it's a practical introduction to service workers in React, so I hope I kept it high level enough. Uh, I'm trying to make it pretty actionable, um, but uh, I, so I hope I found a good balance. So once again, uh, Vikash Srivastava is my name. Um, I'm a second career dev. Uh, uh, most of what we build has a huge flaw in it. Um, what do you think I'm going to say next? What is the flaw? Yes, needs internet. They don't work when you're offline. And I hate that because uh, I moved to N uh, New York City uh, in la less than a year ago, and I constantly am losing internet access. So I'm on the subway for an hour a day, and uh, you know I open up some article on Medium or something that I want to read, and then uh, suddenly I'm down in the A, and I open it up again, and it refreshes, and it's gone. It's like, all right, OK, I hate that. Then I'm in Trader Joe's, and uh, my partner and I share our grocery uh, list. Uh, and uh, I open it up in the bottom floor of Trader Joe's on 72nd Street, and then it refreshes, and I, I lose it. So then I had a caller, and I don't have service, so that doesn't even go through, and it's a mess. OK, so that's my first world problems. But there are actually uh, more. Uh, worldly reasons to care about this stuff too. Um, so back when I worked, uh, back when I lived in Arizona, I used to work with uh, a lot of kids in West Phoenix. Uh, a lot of them, they might have a pretty nice phone, but their families couldn't afford really expensive data plans, didn't have Wi-Fi at home. So they could only access the internet if they were at school or some free Wi-Fi somewhere. So they would, uh, they would hang out at the Walmart parking lot and, and use the Wi-Fi from the Starbucks that was inside. Uh, a lot of places, even in the US, uh, there are a lot of examples that are given about uh, emerging markets and developing countries um, making use of uh, offline access. But there are a lot of places, even in the US, where uh, people don't have access to um, uh, consistent uh, network access. So um, this is a picture of the Navajo Reservation back in Arizona as well. Um, we have a solution. And that is service. Oh, uh, not these kinds of service workers. Uh, not that guy. Ah, service workers. Um, so service workers, this was copied from Create React App. I actually put that in once I knew what Sean was talking about today, um, which, is, uh, which I will come back to later. Um, OK, what's a service worker? So a service worker sits between your app and the network. Um, so you'll see there's the browser tabs on one side, network on the other side. Service worker is kind of like, uh, I just heard an analogy on, on a podcast. It's like the, if, if you're on planet Earth and you're trying to talk to the moon people, uh, service workers are your UFO that like, uh, intercepts all your uh, communication between and can change it. So, if you, so normally, your tabs communicate with the network and back and forth. When you have a service worker, it sits in between. So your tabs communicate with the service worker. So service, uh, service worker then communicates with the network. If your network is down, then your tabs still communicate with the service worker and, and back. So that's, how, that's what gives you offline access. Um, if you exit out of your tabs too, it works the other way. So that you can have background processes that communicate with the network. So it's really useful for a lot of functionality. Um, uh, it also gives you access to cold hard cache, uh, your cache using the cold cache storage API. Uh, one thing I just want to throw in there, I wasn't sure where to put this. Uh, people, I think, get very confused about the difference between progressive web apps and service workers. Think about it like squares and rectangles. Um, uh, progressive web apps are squares, service workers are rectangles, uh, or even like quadrilaterals maybe. Um, because service workers, you can use almost anywhere. In almost any web app, it will add functionality. Um, progressive web apps are like a whole set of standards that are great, I love them, but uh, you don't need to venture down that path if you want to add some cool stuff to your app. Um, so whey protein, it, it gives you power uh, and uh, whey complex. Uh, service workers are powerful and complex. Uh, so uh, let's get started on some of the easier stuff. So I tried to break it down, tried to make it uh, uh, a, little, uh, a little simpler to, to, to take into account. So first, you had to check whether the browser that the client is using uh, even has access to a service worker. So that's why you have if service worker in Navigator. Um, then you register it. So you got to create it in the first place. It's called registering. Easy peasy. OK. Now we're going to go over some common patterns. Once again, uh, don't stress too much about the detail here. Um, this is about concepts because we're going to bring up something later. And I put it in a meme. OK. So first, uh, the not cool 
uh, version of building web apps is just network only. It doesn't work if you have offline access. Then you do cache. Uh, then you have a cache falling back to your network. Then you have cache falling back to your network with frequent, up, frequent updates. Uh, and then also kind of on the same third and fourth levels, you have the network falling back to cache, which mirrors cache falling back to network. And then same thing for uh, the frequent updates. Okay, so this is just an example of you don't really care about offline functionality, so you just have network only. Uh, these are things you never want to pa cache, like network pings. Uh, I'm not really sure why you would do this. I've never done this, but um, self is just the global scope of the service worker. Um, you add an event listener for a fetch, and you fetch whatever you want from your API. Okay? Uh, normally, you're going to do this elsewhere in, your, elsewhere in your app, but you could do it in service worker if you want. Uh, now you have a cache. So this is, if you just pull stuff from your cache, um, it's not going to update, so as long, uh, as long as the lifetime is of your app, it's going to stay that way. Um, so same thing, there's only one line that changed. So you, you, uh, when you load the, uh, the event listener matches against your cache, uh, and, that's, and then it returns that. Okay, now you have cache falling back to network. Um, this is if you have, uh, you want fast updates. Uh, the issue is uh, that it won't show the update until the second time you visit uh, the page. So you'll visit the page, um, and, uh, and you know, you'll see old stuff, and then the second time you go, you'll see, the, even though there was an update, then you'll see the update. Uh, that's the code there. It adds uh, a little uh, if statement. Okay, network falling back to cache, very similar. Um, it loads from the network first, then offline from the cache. Doesn't optimize load times. A uh, good example here is the latest weather. So you want to have the latest weather update if you have a weather app, but if you're offline, you just want to know what the most recent forecast was, e even if it was yesterday. Um, so you just load that. Um, and that's just kind of the reverse. Uh, once again, I'm skipping over a lot of the code because I'm going to show you something later that makes this easier. Um, okay, so now we get to the like brain exploding, like uh, uh, ethereal experiences uh, part. So this is cache. So you, you, when, you, when you load the page, it first tries to load from cache. Then it falls back to your network if it doesn't have a cache. So that means it's like your first visit, you've never cached anything before. Then, uh, once that loads, it makes a call to update the data again. Um, so I think that's basically what I said. It updates cache in the background. This is like event listening. So think of like Meetup. I'm not sure if Meetup uses this, but uh, a lot like Meetup. There's a lot of new events. Um, so you really want to have the latest info. Uh, worst case scenario. Uh, but you also want to load really fast because people, I don't know, get bored and maybe don't want to go to a meetup. Uh, if, it doesn't, if it takes too long to load, maybe they go to Eventbrite. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and so as it loads the first instance uh, of listings, then it updates in the background. Okay, so look at this. I mean, already we're starting to get to a lot of code. I had to make it like size 14 font. On these big screens, it's okay, but this is really annoying to write out. So, um, oh, and, and then there's the opposite. Network first, then cache. Okay, lots of, lots of boilerplate. Uh, so yeah, yikes. Uh, service workers have a lot of boilerplate. Um, so that might be why some people don't like them. Um, like the Create React app community. Um, so these are some big um, events, uh, conversations that have gone on in Create React app. Um, so f the first one you see, PWAification, uh, was the first uh, kind of pull request that added service workers to create React app. Then there was uh, why was service worker merged in was uh, basically a big conversation of people complaining about how difficult it was and how, much, uh, how many problems it caused. Uh, then we merged in a new uh, pull request, disabling the service worker by default. But uh, there's a new thing. What is that? Workbox. Um, that is now an open pull request to, that might be added in pretty soon. Um, there has to be a better way. Maybe uh, it has something to do with that word. JavaScript libraries for adding offline support for web apps. Um, so remember that cache falling back to network with frequent updates? Uh, that, that was the code. This is it now. So Workbox is a library that Google um, made available. It's an update to uh, whatever uh, libraries that, that Create React App uses currently, uh, it's a lot better. Um, and uh, they have a strategy. 
And so they call it stale while revalidate. So that's because cache falling back to network with frequent updates is kind of annoying. Um, cool. So let's see some concrete examples. So this is, this is what I think you should focus on in terms of code. Um, I chose three examples that, that they have on there that are like super frequent needs that you might come across. Um, so this might be a good place to just start with a service worker. You don't have to do it for your whole app, um, but it creates some benefits right now. Sorry if you don't like uh, curse words. Speed up your initial load times by pre-caching pre Google Fonts. Um, this is BoJack Horseman, another good show. Um, so with this one, let's, let's walk through this. So Workbox is, is initialized. Uh, it has a kind of section called routing. You register your route. So this is the routes for, this is regular expressions for Google Fonts. So this is any sort of URL that has Google Fonts associated with it. And you cache first, so it's called pre-caching. So before your page loads, uh, it caches it immediately. Uh, it saves it as Google APIs. Uh, and then uh, this plugin right here um, isn't necessary, um, but it's added so that uh, you don't save like 500 million fonts onto your uh, users' uh, browsers, uh, you know, because you care about your users. And so you max it out at 30. Um, another example. We're going to speed up our initial load times by pre-caching our images. Um, so, uh, oh, and uh, that's, a, that's a cache image. Uh, yeah, sorry guys. Um, this is my humor. This is why I don't have many friends. Okay, so uh, what you do is you first register your route. And uh, this, what we're doing here is we are checking for file types. So anything that's, that's an image, we cache it first, we put it in a cache called images, uh, and then we have you know, the same plugin again. So expiration, uh, we max it out at 60 images, and then 30 days um, is how long we want to keep them. Our users probably don't want to have like, our uh, hero image on their uh, computer for seven years. So um, cool. And then this one's cool, uh, uh, and another good piece of media. Uh, we're going to speed up our subsequent visits. So on the first load, it's not going to be fantastic. But the second visit, it's going to make your page load super quick uh, by caching your CSS and JavaScript. Um, so this is, once again, the stale while revalidate. This is a really clutch uh, pattern. Um, so it, it looks for all your JavaScript and CSS, and it adds uh, to your static resources cache, is what they call it. So. Uh, oh, and uh, kind of another thing, because a lot of us work with Webpack, uh, it's too complicated for this talk, but um, Workbox web, Webpack plugin is pretty cool. Uh, there's some boilerplates that are not super uh, popular, but uh, are on GitHub that I link to in my like service worker resources get, uh, repo you'll see at the end um, that might be, uh, that you might just want to look through, kind of like, like Sean. Okay, so let's recap. What did we learn? Uh, one, offline's a big deal. Uh, one, so you can make my life easier when I'm on the subway or shopping at Trader Joe's. Uh, but also for people who, uh, you know, have accessibility is a, is a major issue. Two, uh, service workers make your apps simpler uh, for the user, uh, robust and fast. Um, and three, Workbox makes it so easy you have no excuse. Don't give me excuses, people. Okay, and then this is a quote I just really liked. Um, one book I read while preparing for this talk, I absolutely adored. So I wanted to take a quote from, from it. If you are interested in this stuff, um, especially progressive web apps, uh, I thought it was awesome. Um, so anyway, offline and low connectivity conditions are inevitable, but we always treat it like it's some catastrophic failure and allow Google to have the little dinosaur show up. Um, but we need to think about it as just another state in our, in our app's life cycle. It's just so, an, another thing that we should prepare our users to uh, to, to be in the position of having, uh, and we should handle that state gracefully. So next time you see this, say, service workers, service workers, service workers, okay? All right. Um, so thanks. You can find me on Twitter at uh, Vikas, my first name. Uh, so my repo is private as of right now. I'm going to make it public uh, tonight or tomorrow. And then these are some resources I found particularly cool. You'll see the, the links in my repo, though. So um, yeah, that's that.